Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Christine of Side Street Market and it is time to follow me to the flea market again. Y'all know I love shopping at the flea market and I did venture out recently and check out how it was doing because in the summertime, you know, we're so hot in Florida that some of our vendors go off and they go picking cross country and bring back wonderful goodies for the fall. So I kind of went out to see what I could still find, spent about half an hour, did a quick pick there. And then I went to a local church thrift store and I did a little run through there. So I have about maybe like 12 items to show you guys, but I thought they were super cute and I wanted to bring them to you. So here we go. So the first set of items I'm going to show you are from the flea market. And this is the first item I picked up. It's got a clear base that goes into like this milky opalescent ruffled top. I thought this piece was really pretty. There is some... I'm noticing like from age and use, there are some like right here. There is some chips on the outside. I can feel it like if I run my nail over, but it does not go through. It's just kind of scratches from age, but I just thought the, the look of that was beautiful. I'm gonna have to dig in my books and figure out who made this and what it is, but I just thought that was really pretty and I love the cut glass detail on the bottom. So yeah, I was happy. This is the first piece I got. So that started the day out good. Then for those who love vintage purses, I picked up this cutie. Now there is some age staining. There's staining here and there's staining here. And the inside does have, I don't know if you guys can see that, it does have a stain on it, but it says made in France. I knew this was definitely old, definitely vintage. And I felt like for those of you who are purse collectors out there in the community, that one of you could rescue this and bring it back to life because you'd know what you were doing if you collected purses. So I picked this up and this will be in a live sale. And then I got some things for my followers who love puppy dogs. So these are for sale. And like I said, if these haven't popped up in live sales yet, you're always welcome to email me. Because I don't know sometimes when my videos will be hitting in relation to, you know, when I've purchased items or shown them. It just kind of, it goes as it goes. So, I'm trying to get all the dogs out. Sorry, guys. I was excited to find some more dogs. So... Let me make sure. Okay, I've got that piece there. Okay. Whew, it's warm today. Okay. So first up is this ashtray because it's got the holes, the marks. This little dog ashtray. It does have made in Japan on the bottom, but it's kind of stamped into it. So I, it's got a bisque bottom and it's right there. It says made in Japan. There's no chips, no damage, no issues. So this is a cute little doggy ashtray that will be up for grabs. And then I got this beautiful, it does say Japan on the bottom, Kali. I loved the colors. I thought this was a really nicely done piece. These are all smaller guys. They're all maybe like, <clears throat> like five inches across by three inches tall. Not too big for shipping. There is crazing on the head from age, but I just thought this Kali was really pretty. I I had one before, but it was more of a blonde tone, so I not had the black and dark brown. Then for all the, I think this is like a little Boston Terrier. Look at the face on that one. I just love the face detail. Now, the vendor I went to had about like 12 dog things, but I really picked the ones that I thought you guys would like the most. This is another Japan piece that were maybe breeds I hadn't seen as much. There were some really big pieces, which are a little more difficult to ship. So I kind of just went for quality and like even the little tongue on this one. Just, I just love that. So I think this one's like a little Boston Terrier. And then, oh my goodness, Mama and Baby Scottish Terriers. Look at that. So cute. Made in Japan. Had to snag that. So that is all the dog stuff I got for the dog lovers. And then I did pick up two brooches and you can... Rest assured, these will pop up in a live sale. This first one I got is more of a modern piece, but I liked that it had like a celestial theme. It does have a C-clasp. It's signed copyright JJ, so I need to look that up. 
and it's gold and silver and it's like this moon sun with the moons and Saturn and the planets around it let's see if I have a piece of white there we go I just thought that was really neat something different I need to see who JJ is the maker but I thought that was something a little different for the sales so let me know what you think maybe a little more I don't know if I call that mid-century but I like that and now this one I didn't check I don't think yet yeah, I don't think these these just really shimmer but they don't glow under black light so this is a beautiful gold floral piece it is not signed it definitely is older look at that with all those pretty rhinestones so that would definitely be so it's got like three big leaves and then these cluster of flowers let's see if I can get that to focus there we go and the clasp on the back is definitely older it's a really good solid piece like it's got some weight so I picked that up because I know we love our brooches. We're bringing back the brooches. And then I've got a few more glass pieces. So I seem to be collecting these now. So I need to stop buying them because I have one there and I have one down there. But they're like these amber compotes. This one is like a nice cut glass. It's a little bit lighter in weight. It's got the cut glass base. I like the ruffle top. It's a excuse me, a bit thicker, nice sturdy piece. So I like that one. And this one is just even more of an orange amber. It's just really like, it reminds me of a fancy medieval goblet. Look at that. And then the floral bottom, like even how that shines. And now I wanted to check. Yep, I was right. Can you guys see that in the bottom? It has just a little bit of that cadmium in the bottom. It's like, it's like a haze. It's like a haze that lights up in the bottom. The other one does not have that. But I thought this one might. It's got a little bit of the haze. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh yeah. So I don't know if that's like a true light up, but you can see it gets a little foggy when you run the black light over it. So this one was just really cool. I've not seen anything like this one before. It's very chunky. It feels kind of medieval to me. I loved it. So I grabbed that. Again, these will be in sales. And you can just see the difference of how thick the glass is on this one compared to this one. It's just, you can see, like, see how yellow this one is? It was very interesting. So I grabbed it. And I was excited because the vendor I bought this from told me she has another trailer and unit she needs to unload and she has more glass and she's who I bought my collection up here from. So I'm very excited. Okay. Then I'm pretty sure this is Fenton, but I need to look it up. It just, when it was sitting in her glass display, the light, the quality of it, it just, it screams Fenton. And these are very, very, they say like the super sharp, you know, these guys. But look at the, it's just the quality. And it's got like the little clover feet. The quality just screamed Fenton to me. This one does not do any lighting up. But I just thought that was really, really, really pretty. It's just, it shines so beautifully. It just screams quality and it's a solid piece too. So you can kind of start to tell the difference between quality versus once you've started handling glass a bit versus the knockoff stuff. And then my last flea market purchase of the day were these really cool, chunky pink depression glass votive holders. Like you could get a real solid candle in these. So I got the set of two. And these will be in a live sale. I like them because you could put one of your taper candles in the center or you could put a big chonky candle. And they're heavy. Like they're probably a good pound and a half. And these are probably, I don't, I wouldn't say that these are like true depression glass. I'd say these might be like the 80s repop. But I liked the sparkle of the cut on them. So <clears throat> we did good. We got some glass today, guys. So of course I ate like a, a peanut 
granola bar before I filmed this. So now as I'm talking, I'm like, <laughs> like, I, <laughs> you know, okay. So that was flea market. So not bad for a half hour of picking at the flea market. That all came from two vendors, three vendors. So that wasn't too bad. Okay. Now I went to the little church thrift store, which I love this store. Kim, all my vintage, are you watching? So I picked up this Italian inlaid tray with the hand painted roses on it. Now there is a little bit of scratch. Like you can feel like the lines right here on it. You can see them right there, but it is still a beautiful, beautiful piece. So I'll definitely be putting this in a live sale. I was so excited. I found this in the kitchen section. It was mixed in with all the serving trays. So, and all I saw sticking out was like this corner and I'm like, oh, I know what that is. So I ran and grabbed that. And then I also found this piece, which, so the quality on the bottom is not fantastic because it is a home painted piece, October 3rd, 1969. But minus the bottom and the little chip it got on the way home because it wasn't wrapped. So it does have a little ding. I still thought that this was kind of a really unique because even if you put it this way, or stage it this way, you don't see that chip on the back side. And if you fill it with things, it's just really pretty how it was blue with the red drip glaze, just something different. So that'll be in a live sale. And then, all right guys, I know these are gonna be popular. So these will probably end up as an offer up in a live sale. New American plastic bricks, look. It's the vintage, like, they're plastic pieces you could use to build the houses. Now, this originally had 119 pieces, and I'm telling you that it's only filled to about here. So I don't think all the pieces are still there, but you do get some of them. But look at like the patina on the tin. There's no barcode, so you know it's older, and that red, white, and blue. It's that beautiful like cobalt teal blue. There we go. So this, this is gonna definitely be an offer up in a live sale because I, I was really excited to find this in the vintage, in the toy section. And it reminds me of my childhood because I'm pretty sure I had those to play with from my sisters. I got a lot of their like hand-me-down toys. And now this is the last thing I found. And I was super stoked to find this. And of course now it's not displaying right for me. I got this nesting basket set all three of them and thank you to debbie at our vagabond travels because i was showing her my haul and she's like oh those are for holding casseroles i had no idea what these were for but they're all made in the philippines three sizes these i'll be listing online because i don't know how i'm going to ship them yet because it's kind of hard to nest them so this is the first basket with the straw dec decoration and it's pretty clean. It only has damage in one little corner. This one has a little staining, but this is the medium one. So you got your onions and grapes on this one. And then this one has the handmade in the Philippines tag on the interior. And it's got the watermelons. How cute is that? So I loved this little church store. I love, I get to go there maybe once a month, once every couple of months. And I always find quality stuff at good prices. And I love supporting the local community church stores because they do so much great outreach. But guys, that was it. That was my haul. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up. Let me know what your favorite items were, what you might've left behind. And I will see you soon, guys. Take care.